As somebody who did not grow up watching Pokemon X and Y live when it was out, uh, that intro is still a little bit weird to me, because I'm used to the OG, OG Gen 1. And this is Gen 6, Generation 6 Pokemon, Pokemon X and Y on the 3DS. Uh, these are the Pokemon that came out with that generation. It's the smallest generation of Pokemon, I believe. And some very, very unique designs here. This is the generation that is based on France. So we're going to go ahead and rank these uh, Pokemon on a tier list. Now, normally when I do generation tier lists like this, I've in the past done Pokemon I could fight. And I thought about doing that for this one, but I haven't done those uh, videos in a while. And to be honest, those videos never did too well. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and rank the Generation 6 Pokemon, mostly just so we can do Gen 6, then 7, 8, and we can be ready for the new Pokemon games coming out this year, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So let me know in the comment section, guys, what else you'd like me to rank. It could be Pokemon, it could be gaming, it can be uh, the color purple. Let me know what you would like me to rank or make a tier list on. And if you like tier lists like this, a subscription to the channel would help you out to see more of them, and it would help me out to know that people are liking my content. But... Either way, viewership is the number one thing, and I appreciate you for watching. Without me rambling, let's go ahead and start, guys. The the grass starter of this generation is Chespin. So we have Chespin, who evolves into Quilladin, who evolves into Chestnut. You guys can see our ranks here. We have All-Time Goat at the top and Generation 6 Goat. So All-Time would be a, any Pokemon, one of the greatest. Gen 6 is like, yeah, it's one of the best designs of this generation, but not of all time. And then the other ones, I think, are pretty self-explanatory, all the way down to Dogwater which is not a word. Um, if you put it together, it'll tell me it's not a word. Oh, never mind. Okay, cool. Uh, Chespin. Chespin, I think, is a pretty cool and unique Pokemon. Pretty cool, unique starter. Um, I like Chespin. It's a little chipmunk thing. I think it's cool, unique. Yeah. Quilladin drops down a bunch for me, though. Quilladin is way too round for me. And if you don't know what these Pokemon look like, uh, maybe I'll link something in the description. Usually I use full body pictures, but I found this one and it was very cute. So, Quilladin is just way too round for me. Below average design. Chestnut I actually like. I'd say it's... it's, it's it is a pretty unique uh, grass starter. It is grass fighting, which is the only grass starter that has that type combination, which is cool. And it looks much more like a fighter or brawler than most of the grass starters do. A lot of the grass starters are just animals. Uh, Chestnut being a little bit different from that is pretty cool for me. Uh, Fennekin, above average as a Pokemon overall. Most uh, starters would be. I'm not a huge, huge fan of the Fennekin line, to be honest. Uh, but I'd say it in itself is above average. Uh, Brakeson, mm, kind of mid for me. It has the same kind of issue that Quilladin does, though not as much, where it's just that awkward middle stage. Um, just kind of a weird design overall. Uh, and then Delphox... Delphox is a very cool design, very unique in that it's it's a fire and psychic type, so almost like a fire mage uh, is the kind of design you get there. So cool, unique, I'd say, but not blowing me away. I know some people swear by the Delphox line, but uh, yeah, I, I, I am not one of them. All right, next up we have the Frogadier line. Why was that the first name that came to my mind? Froakie, Frogadier, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, and Greninja. Froakie is a cool and unique starter to me. I never really pick water starters, but this, and Gen 6 is the only generation where the water starter is actually my favorite. Um, so I, I do actually like uh, Froakie more than Chespin, but I will put them in the same category there. I think they are cool and unique. Frogadier has that weird second stage thing where it's just like, you know, it's not as cute as the first stage, it's not as cool as the last stage. Yeah. Greninja, one of the all-time goats, probably my favorite water starter other than, I guess I really do like Blastoise as well, uh, just for the nostalgia. But yeah, Greninja, obviously very, very popular Pokemon if you know anything about the Pokemon fandom and whatnot, but uh, yeah, kind of obvious that it's going to be up there. Some people might disagree, but I think it's an all-time goat. Uh, Bunnelby and Diggersby. Bunnelby, I think, is just a mid-regular early route rodent. Nothing really to, to write home about there. Diggersby, I actually think, goes down a little bit. I think it's a below-average design. It's a normal ground type, which is a little weird. Its ears have, like, hands on them like it digs with its ears. It's just kind of weird to me. Not really a great, great design, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in below-average. Uh, Fletchling... Fletchinder and Talonflame. Fletchling, cool, unique. So you have another early route fire Pokemon, or excuse me, an early route 
bird Pokemon. This one is just normal flying. Or is it just flying? I think it might be just flying. And when it evolves, it, because it becomes Fletchinder, which I think is a pretty cool design. It is unique for an early route Pokemon to have a, a secondary typing. Uh, most of them, you know, Pidgeot, Spearow, uh, uh, Noctowl, they're all normal flying. And Fletchinder and Talonflame bring in fire to that. So Talonflame, I think, is a Gen 6 GOAT. I think I'm actually going to put Fletchling down in above average. It is above average as a Pokemon for sure, but it's not that cool for sure. You know, Fletchinder is better than Fletchling, I I'd say, probably. Next we have, and this is where I'm going to start to forget some names, so fair warning on that one. Uh, we have Scatterbug. Is it Scatterbug? I think it's Scatterbug, Spupa, and Vavillian. Scatterbug, it's a really ugly bug. Um, yeah, I don't think Caterpie is necessarily a great looking Pokemon either, but it's kind of in that same realm. Spupa, pretty mid. I like its little cloak thing, but eh. And Vavillian, super unique Pokemon where there's so many different designs for it, um, which are actually based on where in the world you are. So where you're playing your 3DS or what region, I believe, your, re uh, your 3DS is coded to. Uh, very, very unique Pokemon here with Vavillian. Not really one that I would want to use in battle, but definitely one that's fun to collect, and I'm still working on collecting all of the Pavilions in my Pokemon home. Litleo and Pyroar. This is the male Pyroar. The female does not have the huge mane. Litleo is interesting. It's a normal fire Pokemon. Gonna say it's an above average design for sure, and I'll probably put Pyroar in that same tier. Uh, I wish they had gone with more of a fiery look for this but they wanted to make a normal fire pokemon that was the point um so that's going to be just above average for me if pyroar had been more on on fire or something i think that would have been cooler but yeah above average it's better than the average pokemon the first fairy type pokemon are up next we have flabebe what is the middle one called Floet and Florgis. Yeah, I figured that one out. Uh, Flabebe is pretty ugly. I'm going to put it below average. Floet, going to put it probably mid. And Florgis, above average. Uh, gets cooler as it evolves. Florgis also has some different designs of it, um, some different colors and whatnot. So uh, that is pretty cool. I th think the blue one's probably my favorite. I'm going to put it above average. Um, the I have used these ones actually in battle, and uh, Flabebe is absolutely useless. So. Yeah. Uh, next we have Skiddo and Go Goat. These Pokemon are so iconic to me for the sole purpose that they were like the last Pokemon I found out about. Uh, I took a long break from Pokemon when I was in high school and stuff, and when I came back, I like played through Gen Seven. I got to like the end of Gen Seven, and like these guys, these Pokemon aren't in that. So I was like, wait, what? These are these exist? I saw them. I thought they were literally fan made Pokemon. So I am totally biased on this. <laughs> But I'm going to put them in cool, unique. I think I might even put Gogo -Go in Gen 6 Goat. He is a goat, after all. Um, just for that little story there that I just skipped over these Pokemon and didn't even know they existed for year, until years after they were created. So, yeah. Pancham and... Pan... Champ? I don't know. I don't remember the name of... I think it's Pancham, right? Uh, mid design on that one. I know some people love this one. Gonna put in above average. So far, we're looking at the Gen 6 Pokemon, and we have pretty pretty positive results here. May have to adjust them as we go. Uh, Quilladin and Diggersby, we may need to put down in bad. Um, because just looking at some of these other Pokemon, yeah, I think as, as dorky as Spupa looks, it's probably... Well, no, maybe Spupa's bad, too. Let's drop down Bunnelby as well. And, uh... Yeah, I think that's... I think that's fair. We can keep on going. Furfro, another super, super interesting Pokemon in this gen where it switches its design as a bunch of different forms. I'm gonna say below average, because this Pokemon... I, I feel like it'd be a lot cooler if it had a signature move that changed with its different forms, and to my knowledge, it doesn't. Um... I haven't played much of Pokemon X and Y, so I might be missing something there, but Furfro is just a Pokemon that, like, like in Pokemon Home, right? Like, I'm trying to get all of it, but they, they're never around, so that's, yeah. 
Below average. Esper and Meowstic. And this, I believe, is the male form of Meowstic. So there's a male and female form that look very, very similar. Uh, also, while I'm while I think of it, this tier list did say Gen 6 and related Pokemon. I don't believe there are any Pokemon in here that are not Gen 6. Um, but if there were some, like an evolution or something, they would also be listed here. Meowstic's mid, or excuse me, Esper's. Esper's kind of below average, to be honest. Very, very simple design. Meowstic's cool because it has like different forms and stuff. Gen 6 had a lot of that, as you guys may have noticed by now, that um, has a lot of like just different forms, right? So the male and female. Not only different forms, but I believe different uh, abilities and moves as well for Meowstic, which is very interesting, but I don't think they're very good. Um, next we have the Aegis Slash line. So this is Aegis Slash, which evolves from Dewblade, which evolves from... Ooh, is this going to be the first one I don't remember the name of? Yeah, I don't remember the name of the first stage of this one. But it's a line of Pokemon based on swords, and that's awesome. Uh, Aegis Slash and Dewblade I'm going to put in Goat and Han Blade, no, Han Edge. Own Edge. Own Edge. Own Edge, I think it's Gen 6 Go. So I love this line of Pokemon. Steel type Pokemon, very unique designs, very unique everything. It does fall into that issue that Gen 5 through 7 have where they just kind of design an item and give it eyes. But I don't know. This item's a sword and that's cool. So I'm putting them up there and go. Spritzy, Aromatisse. Spritzy, below average, Aromatisse, bad. I really just don't like how this stupid little parrot chicken thing looks. Uh, yeah, not my favorite Pokemon by far. Um, what is this called? I don't remember. I just caught one in Pokemon Go though. But it falls into Slurpuff. And um, yeah, not so great either. It's just a little cloud, just a little mush ball. Let me go ahead and put this one in below average. I don't think it's as bad as Aromatisse. Um, I think it's time to drop Quilladin and Diggersby down to Dogwater. I may put Aromatisse down there as well. Spupa, I guess, can stay. Or, no, this is Spupa. Scatterbug. I feel like I'm missing something about the name. But that can stay down there in bed. Inky, one of the weirdest Pokemon ever, where it actually evolves when you flip over your DS and level it up in a certain area. So that's interesting. And Inky is like a very overpowered Pokemon. In Pokemon lore, this thing can actually like mind control people and stuff. And it's like a villain. It's actually like super evil. So that's weird. Um, mid and above average for them. Uh, they're cool. They're unique. But uh, I, I don't know that they belong up here in this tier. Um, Babarkle and Barbroach? Is those what these are called? Barbroach? I don't know. Those names might be wrong. This thing is ugly. It's just like a little hand. A couple hands coming out of a rock. This one's a little bit better. Gonna put him in mid, but uh, yeah. Doesn't doesn't win any awards for me. Oof. Names, names, names. Skrelp and and this other one. Dragon Water Types. Very interesting. I actually really like these. I think they're really cool and unique. And I'd say this one is actually a Gen 6 goat. Something in Cla Clawitzer. One of them is, is Clawitzer. I think the one is above average. And the bigger one... Eh, probably just put in above average as well. Doesn't really gain much from the evolution, but it's cool. Uh, next up we have Heliop Helioptile. Heliolisk. I believe those are the names of these guys. And uh, they're normal electric type. So again, we have a normal blank type. We had that with uh, Pyroar and Litleo earlier, where they're normal fire. We also had that with Go-Goat, I believe is normal grass. That one I might be wrong about, though. Um, what other one was normal something? Oh, the birds are normal fire. Or normal fly. No, they lose normal. Right. I don't know. So they used a lot of normal in this generation. Um, I, I actually think this Pokemon looks really stupid. Uh, when it evolves, it looks a lot better. I'm gonna put it in mid, but uh, yeah, this one by itself just looks dumb. Tyrant and my favorite fossil Pokemon. These things are absolute Generation Six goats. 
let's go ahead and toss that one up there in all time go it's one of my favorite uh rock pokemon i'd say is the evolved form of tyrant which of course on the spot here i cannot remember the name of so make fun of me in the comments if you guys want for sure i may have deserved it almora almora maybe i should have just had a list of these pokemon up i, I swear i watch poke uh, well, i swear i play pokemon yeah ice and rock type um these pokemon are cool because they're really unique but they also suck because rock and and ice together is just a really bad type combination um i think these ones are pretty unique though I, I, i'm gonna go ahead and put this one up in gen 6 go it's pre-evolved form it's pretty cool and unique so i'll put it there um taking a look at our tiers here we have three no this is our mid yeah so we're still leaning above average overall um let's see if we can keep that going Halucha, probably going to put in mid. I know a lot of people love, love, love Halucha. I think it's rather annoying because for whatever reason, every time I encounter a Halucha, he proceeds to annihilate at least one of my Pokemon. Um, so that's so that's cool. It's signature move, I believe, Flying Press. It does both fighting and or flying damage, whichever one would do more. So it is difficult to tank that one. I don't know. Maybe I've had just bad luck, but I'm going to put it in mid. Dedende is Dedene, Dedene, Dedene is bad. It's a Pikachu clone, and it just looks like a fat Pikachu. There are better Pikachu clones in this, like Togedemaru is cool because it's like steel and electric. Mimikyu is cool. Um, even Plusin and Minin, they're just electric type, but they're different. They have something going. Dedene is just French Pikachu, right? And the only reason it's French is because of the zone, not even anything in its design. Carbink I really like. I'm going to put Carbink above average. Um, I, I really like this Pokemon. I, I think he's cool. Very unique as well. I like the concept of a rock Pokemon using crystals, uh, because crystals and diamonds and whatnot are actually forms of rock. Um, so using that in their designs is a really cool thing, in my opinion. Gumi, I think, is a cool and unique uh, design for a pseudo-legendary. Um, I believe these guys are just Dragon-type but though they they have a lot to do with water i believe it can only evolve into its last stage while it is raining but i actually am not a huge fan of sligu or gudra this might surprise people i don't like the whole slimy dragon look i i, I it's like a happy slimy dragon like it's it doesn't really even look like a dragon to me i I don't really even like the Hysulian form of it either so i don't know i'm gonna put it in bad sligu i think is a little bit better so we'll put that in mid Clef key is dog water. It is it is just keys. It is just keys. Um, that is a Pokemon apparently. So, yeah. Phantom and Trevenant. Phantom I think is pretty cool and unique. Trevenant is it cool enough to be a Gen Six goat? We might have to move it down, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it there. I think Trevenant's a really really cool Pokemon. I don't know why they had two different lines of Grass Ghost Pokemon in this generation, but uh, Pump. Pumpkaboo, 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 and Poltergeist, Polterghost, Polter, Pumpkin, Pumpkin Ghost, I don't know, whatever these ones are called, they're not as cool, uh, this one we can put in probably mid, and it's a ball form, actually I'd put in below average, because it just has a weird design, this one also has a gimmick where like, oh, you can find them in different sizes, and it's like, cool, why would I care about that, so, yeah, I don't know uh avalug and its pre-evolved form burmite burmite i think is pretty cool it's a nice ice pokemon above average and avalug i'd say i probably like as well cool and unique for sure yeah i think we can put that there our last non-legendary or mythical pokemon on this list are going to be noibat and noivern these pokemon are just tailor-made for what could have been a sound type um, I believe that they end up being fi flying and then flying dragon. So interesting that we have a pure flying type. I think that's what Noibat is, is pure flying. So that's pretty cool and unique. And I'll put its ball form in that category as well. So we actually have more cool and unique Pokemon than above average. Uh, before we do our legendaries, maybe let's take a look at that. So, so far we have these four in all time goats. Maybe we move down Dewblade for that. Let's go ahead and do that. 
Um, cool and unique. Let's move down Chespin, because I don't think he's that cool compared to some of these other Pokemon that we've been seeing here. Froakie can stay, Fletchinder can stay, Chestnut can stay. Um, Noibat probably is just above average in light of that. Is Sprelp? Do I move down? Dragalgy, that's the name of this. I just remembered. Uh, Shrelp. And we can leave Shrelp there. The Villion is so cool because of its unique. I have to put it in this tier because it's just so unique. Um, yeah. Are there any here that we think are bad? This thing is honestly below average. This, uh, the Baracle. Um, you know, stick. Inky's kind of ugly, but I guess he can stay. Halucha, interesting design. Pumpkaboo. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that is fair where we place them. We moved a couple things around. All right. We have Pokemon X, Pokemon Y, so that's Xerneas and Yavatel. 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 And also Zygarde, who never got his own game because. I don't know why. Uh, Xerneas is an all time goat. I mean. Xerneas is not my favorite Pokemon in the world, but it is one of the most powerful Pokemon ever made uh, in terms of like competitive play and like how good it is in the game. And that's partially due to its typing. It is fairy type, which is awesome. Uh, Yavatal, I think, is a cool and unique Pokemon. It's definitely not my favorite by any means, and its typing, I think, affects that a lot. Dark Flying is not that unique. I feel like if they had just given it something different, if they had maybe changed up the design, given it like maybe, I don't know, Steel, made it like Dark Steel. That would have been really cool, and it would have countered Yavatal a little bit better. Because I believe Yavatal has fairy just hard counters. Or excuse me, Xerneas has fairy just hard counters Yavatal's dark. It's a little odd, but uh, I don't know. I'd say I'd put this one in cool, unique. Zygarde, I'm going to put as a Gen 6 go. Very, very interesting Pokemon. Its whole transforming aesthetic, which doesn't happen fully until Gen 7. So that's... Why didn't we get Gen... Like, Pokemon Z could have been so good because they would have changed so many of the issues that X and Y had, but whatever. Uh, Zygarde there, Gen 6 Goat. Diancie, we, these are the three mythicals we have now. Diancie, Hoopa, and Volcanion. Diancie, probably a Gen 6 Goat. I believe it is the only mythical Pokemon to have a Mega Evolution. Um, I'm a little salty about that because I don't actually have a Diancie. Or a Volcanion, for that matter. Um, but I can't discount. It has a great design. It's the Queen of Carbinks, which is a nice little uh, com uh, relationship between two Pokemon that makes sense to have a relationship with. Hoopa. Kind of wish this tier list had the different forms, because Hoopa Unbound looks like a monster. Absolute monster. This Hoopa, I, I like him. I'd probably say he's a Generation 6 GOAT uh, as well. Uh, being able to, to teleport things through portals and stuff is definitely a really nice aesthetic, really nice, cool thing to be able to do. I think I'm going to move down Honed Edge the more I look at it here, and I guess I guess we'll just leave that like that, just that one. Volcanion, below average. Volcanion is super unique because he's the only, I believe, the only fire-water Pokemon, but it just exists, right? There's, there's very little reason for this Pokemon to even exist. It's a mythical, which a lot of mythicals come out of nowhere, but Diancie had its own movie. Hoopa had its own movie. I think Volcanion did also have its own movie, but it's just not... It's not... It may be the most irrelevant mythical Pokemon. Um, so I'm going to put in below average for that. Also, um, just like Diancie, I'm a little salty that I don't have one, and I can't really get one uh, legally, other than just, I guess, trading somebody who does. So, yeah, we're going to put that into below average. And that's what I think, guys. Uh, could we adjust this a little bit to make it... Eh, it's fine. It's fine. It's all right. Um, that's what we're going to go with, guys. What do you think? How did I do? Let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what other tier lists or stuff you want me to do. And thank you guys for watching. This has been The Guy Who Makes Random Tier Lists, and I'm signing out.